<laughs> Hello, I'm Lisa Bowerman and I play Bernie Summerfield and welcome to Audio Heads Podcast. <coughs> Hello and welcome to Geeks Assembled Audio Heads. This is Susan and with me I have Beef Dad, Lee and Tim and we are gathered today to play respects to uh, the perfect one and all the other masters of Luxor. So uh, it's a first doctor story and Susan and Ian and Barbara and directed by, well, we'll get into all of that in a little bit uh, before that. I'd like to hear what these fellows have to, have to say about it. Oh, Tim, uh, what did you think? I liked the story, and I liked the presentation. I know Lee's going to disagree with me on that, but I, I do think that they had to come up with ways to tell first Doctor stories with in a, in a, in a new way. So instead of a full cast drama like they're so easy to do with the Sixth Doctor. But um, uh, I do think it's a bit too long. I think I think they really should have. Um, trimmed it down a bit i think they could have easily turned this into a four-part story i think that unlike its predecessor which was brilliant uh which is uh, uh farewell great macedon which is all about alexander the eighth and their adventures with him that's that's an epic masterpiece and it's in the same format it's the same length but that didn't have a bit of fat on it at all and this is just kind of like it takes a long time for the story to get moving and I, I don't really have a problem with it because, like I said, I like the format, the, the dual narrators. I think that, that works very effectively. That's something that, they, that was new for them when they started telling these stories. But um, I think that, that they could have easily shaved a good hour off of it. It would have been a tighter, better story probably. It's a good story. That's all I got for now. Cool. Thanks. Um, how about you, Lee? What did you think of uh, the Masters of Luxor? Right. Um, <laughs> um, as I say, it's a well-known fact. This is the type of storytelling that I, I just can't get my head around. Uh, narration for me doesn't work for me. Um, okay, they added a few act, uh, an actor in there to play the perfect one and all like that. Um, yeah, it's. I agree with what Tim said. The, Four episodes was long enough, I think, for this story. Six episodes, it, it, it did um, take a while to get going. Um, well, it looked great to hear um, Caroline Ford as Susan's voice again, um, and uh, William Russell as Ian Chesterton. I'm not that convinced with his portrayal of the first Doctor, to be honest. Uh, having heard Fraser Hines, his performance as the second Doctor, um, William Russell needs a bit of tweaking on the uh, on the William Hartnell, uh, in, well, not impersonation, but you know, interpretation. Um, yeah, story-wise, it, it's okay. Yeah, for me, too long, and say so the narration, I, I did find it hard to get through. So uh, that's my opening thoughts for now. Okay, how about you, Beef Dad, our resident first doctor? What do you think of Masters of Luxor, my man? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, you know, I, the, the thing is, yes, it was originally written to be a six-part television serial. Um, and uh, I, I don't know why it was. I, I think one of the reasons it wasn't done was it would have been a bit dodgy on the um, whole Metropolis thing because uh, the the the, the, the Derivatrons were originally based on the Maria robot from um, Metropolis in, and the, the whole bit about the um, transfer that they try to do um, from a human into a robot. Um, it was 
even even the description of it is basically bang on to Rotwang's laboratory in Metropolis. Um, but for some reason they didn't do this and they went with the Dalek story, which is good. Um, Caroline Ford, I liked her doing Susan. I think she also did a a pretty good um, um, thing. Barbara. Barbara. Hmm? Barbara. Yeah. And William Russell, well, he can't help it. He's He is a lot older now than he was when he originally did it. I mean, you're talking over 50 years ago. Poor little soul, bless him. Um, and actually, I'm, there were moments when I I found his first doctor, where I found his William Hartnell interpretation pretty pretty damn good. Um, there were moments, and you know that those little moments were, were for for me solid gold. Um, and yeah, uh, Joseph Kloska, who basically did all the um, derivatrons and of course the the lead villain um excellent performance from him i thought and uh yeah i it's the perfect one well <laughs> yeah it's ex it, it i love the concept of it um yeah it probably it, i mean they've basically taken the original and done done it as a six parter which it would have been uh yeah possibly possibly it could have been pinged a little bit should we say um but that really for me didn't take away from it because um you know you had 25 minute episodes six of them each one ending on the cliffhanger as it would have done on the television at the time and uh, yeah i enjoyed it i mean that's why it's that's why it's here that's why it's in the library thanks um i'll open this up a little bit more um what are your favorite moments what are your favorite bits or what are your least favorite bits or what do you think needs to be chucked in the bin or you know what things do you want to swing around in the chandeliers for and we'll start with beef dad and reverse the order well your whole business of the um of getting well they they see the city and they go to it i yeah the um the cemetery with the pyramid in it um yeah but that was that was quite cool but uh yeah it's oddly enough it's the because they they could see it from above but the um whole concept of the the city and then them being pulled into it reminded me a bit of the Dalek city which they went and found um uh um and too much screaming uh yeah i think that yeah that there, there was it, it could have been um possibly pruned shall we say but I mean the performances were absolutely excellent the direction was superb and as always they had a brilliant soundscape um, and you had tab on who had been in uh, suspended animation for how many years I can't remember 
for a long time. I think it was seven years, he said. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, in a hermetically sealed coffin. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. The perfect one wants, to, wants a soul, which is why he's trying. But he can't handle women. And, of course, one of the things that confuses him completely, uh, him and his uh, derivatrons, the um, sort of like the um, just general all-purpose robots, um, they uh, the, the the one thing they can't handle is when um, Caroline Ford starts singing. Uh, it's just it's just brilliant, and, and it they have no concepts that fit though fit that. Um, and her laughing, they can't understand laughter. Right. Yeah, there are lots of bits and pieces there that sort of um, grabbed my attention. But there were also bits where it got a little, shall we say, blurred. And those bits could easily have been cut out and not, affect, not have affected the story at all. Cool. Um let's uh let's go to lee what did you think of what were your favorite bits and what were your uh, um well, or what what did you think needed to be chucked in the bin well we, we all know the narration for me should have been chucked in the bin but that's another I'll, I'll, I'll skip over that um one of the scenes what does stand out for me is when they're confusing the perfect one uh, barbara and susan um, doing all the rhymes uh, and all the poems, uh, constantly, constantly trying to mess with his head. That that was that was a good scene. Um, a scene what did uh, right at the beginning sort of uh, get me a bit worried. Um, and it, it was the sort of the cliffhanger of episode one. Uh, they let Susan taste the food in case it was poisoned. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't think the doctor would have let that happen, and I don't think Ian and Barbara would have done it, to be honest. Um, it was a bit weird, that cliffhanger. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, say, it's everything what Beef does. The soundscape is brilliant on it. Um, the actor who plays the perfect one, all the uh, the derivatrons. And, uh, I think, did he play the Tabon as well? Yeah. Um, brilliant character range for that guy. Um, but for me, yeah, the villain of the piece, the, the way he was just so quietly spoken and the way he was described as, what was it, um, yellowish skin and gold gold um, markings on his head and stuff like that. I could I could see that being in a 1960s Doctor Who. Um, shame it wasn't. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, um, and I agree, and I've, I've said it, it, it should have been pruned, as Beef Dad said. <laughs> bits taken out okay yes they made it a six episode because it was originally supposed to be a six episode but you're doing it on a audio uh, four episodes you know I mean, and these episodes were longer than the usual 25 minutes on this audio they were about 32 minutes long or going on like that and I thought well snip a bit here out snip a bit there just reduce it a bit but yeah I can see why they went with the Daleks, to be honest, and you know how I like the Daleks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's for, yeah, that's for me. It, it's the uh, it's the Susan for me made it. Just that you know, Caroline for her voice hasn't aged. Uh, but as Beef Dad said, William Russell says has, has aged and stuff like that. But Caroline Ford still sounds the same. Um, amazing. Over to you, Susan. Thanks, Tim. Are you still there? Sweet. Yeah, I'm there. Rocket. Tell me how. Tell me the bits that you liked and the bits that you don't like. Well, I mean, to Lee's point, I understand his. his if, if you don't like narration, that that um, that that this is, you might not like this story. Then I think, to be fair, they had they had to come up with some way to tell the story when you've got a limited cast and you've got you know, like I said, they, the other missing stories, as they call them. 
you have full cast. You have Colin Baker or, or Nicola Bryant. You know, so they can tell all like he's got what eight or nine of them, and they're all four part stories, and they all they all could have been on television. At, so at was time. that season twenty six or something twenty? Well, they, or they, whatever. Actually, actually, they 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 really went all out and, and dug up a bunch of old things that that might have been stories, story ideas from that time. But my point is though that they had to for for first Doctor stories, um, they had to come up with a, uh, with a way, and I think it's a brilliant way they do it. it rather than just being an audio book format, we just have a single narrator. You have you have they they come up with this way. It's kind of they they they're playing ping pong back and forth. You've got William Russell and Caroline Ford who do an awesome job of moving the story along very quickly. It was very effective in the previous one about Alexander the Great. But uh, this one, that's one of the, that's, to me, that's one of the good things about it is that's, that's one thing that'll keep you listening because they're so good at it. They're so good at playing their own parts. I think Russell is fine as the doctor. And um, I think Carol Ann does a great job just juggling the, the duty of narrating, playing Susan and Barbara as well. I mean, uh, it's, one of my favorite parts too, like both of you guys said, is when they start singing and uh, they they throw, they confuse them, you know. And it's like uh, then you hear two voices singing, and they're both Carol Ann, but one of them's supposed to be Barbara. So it's just it's it's really funny. I mean, you start it's kind of a laugh out loud moment. But um, yeah, I think I think it's a good story. I just I just do think that um, uh, unlike the previous one, it could have been it could have been trimmed a bit, it, maybe a bit more. Uh, cohesive as well because it does seem to i think like beef dad said there's a couple of moments throughout where it kind of kind of drifts or something i mean in other words you start to lose focus on what the, what they're actually talking about i don't know maybe that's just me but um overall it's it's a it's a it's a good story i think and i think it's it's i think it's the brilliant the most brilliant thing they did was come up with the idea of dueling narrators i think that that really does help the story and, they, and these are the only stories like that for big finish the first doctor stories where they have two narrators i think that really works out well yeah um i like the singing bits and i guess my favorite bit is when the the perfect one is coming to terms with his with the fact that the the these are flawed people and that that is that his creator is actually still alive in hibernation and i thought that was really cool it was kind of like a v'ger moment it was like i'm going to join with like this person to to achieve a soul to get past all the the rudiments of 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 mechanical life and i think that that was really interesting um, I I thought I I agree. I think that the the length was too long. It, it did drag. I did end up falling asleep and then going back and re-listening to like a large chunk of it because I was like, what? Why did I fall asleep? This isn't this is Susan for crying out loud. I was really embarrassed by that man. Anyway, it was great. I really love. I really love Caroline Ford double duty and I think that uh Lisa Bowerman you know directed it and she did you know again phenomenal work just she's a great great director and she used um she used really cool things to tell the story she used you know the sound was great like beef dad said I love William Russell as the first doctor you know, I I often thought that that he should have just done it like that instead of instead of adding the new anyway. Uh he was great and I and I loved and I love, you know, Caroline Ford and Susan. Um to the nth degree. She's she's brilliant, she's funny, she's uh when she laughs, I mean it's it her laughter is so contagious and so infectious. It's just, it's just, it's dynamite. It it blew up Dalek's mind and it blew up the 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 uh, what are they called? What are these robots called again? Anyway, though, it blew up their minds. Anyway, it was fun. So yeah, uh, are we? Are are there any? thing a uh, little trivia or anything that anybody knows um would you like to talk about it openly let's let's 
everybody and mute yourself and go ahead and have a conversation about it. I think Beef Dad makes an excellent point about how the the um, the perfect one he does he doesn't understand women and it really throws him off his game. And I think it's wonderful when Chesterton steps up and, and it basically has to say something about like, oh, they're, they're obviously the lesser of the species or something, you know, which probably pissed the ladies off from Snow M, but they didn't really elaborate on it. But I, I think, I think that's, that's, it, you have to think of this story in context of its time. So, I mean, it's just, it is that kind of, you could kind of say that thing back then. You wouldn't say that nowadays. Of course, everybody knows everybody's the same. Everybody's equal. There's none of that nonsense. But I mean, I thought it was an excellent point that you made uh, beef dad because because that that really does take him off his game. So the the the, the presence of uh, Barbara and Susan is what really is his downfall. Mm -hmm. They don't really spell it out that way, but it is it is it is the cause of his downfall, which is really brilliant. Yeah. Well, when I spoke to William about this, um, we did have a chat about the Masters of Luxor, and he yeah. said he had a real ball doing this. He had a lot, they had a lot of fun and um, on more than one occasion they got, they all got the giggles. And I have a, I have, one of my suspicions is that, uh, yeah, that, what, that is one of the points where they probably got the giggles and certainly when uh, Caroline was having to do the nursery rhymes and then the singing and uh, yeah, but he he said they had a brilliant time doing it. They all had a lot of fun doing it, and I think I think that comes across actually that the the, um, the, the the sort of pairing of William Russell and Caroline Ford, I uh, yeah they they've worked together all that they worked together all those years, and now to bring them back together to do these first Doctor stories, I, it's just brilliant and uh, it, uh, hmm. the chemistry is still, is still there, the chemistry is still there. That's, this is, yeah, this, you're right, that's, that's good because they do get to work together on these, these or, um, whereas with the Companion Chronicles, it would be one or the other narrating and, and with a guest spot, a guest character, but uh, these, these, you get the two of them and I, I, I agree, that's, I think they were excellent the way they did the dual narration, because even for the second Doctor, they do differently, because they have um, uh, Fraser Hines impersonating the second Doctor, so they, they try to make it a bit more full cast with less narration, I believe. No, no, they still have narration. But yeah, I think he, he, yeah. he did that. He did that in his panel at uh, Time Lash in October. He he did a brilliant hmm. second Doctor. Oh, awesome! And he, and he was sober. <laughs> oh no. So Lee, do you have any do you have any further things to add before we rate it? He wants his three hours back. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so I want my three hours back. <laughs> <laughs> but Susan, but Caroline Ford, Lee. Well, that might, well, yeah, but it was still three three and a half hours. Well, three and a half hours. It was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Without further ado, let's. I'll let I'll let you start us off. What what kind of grading would you give the the Masters of Luxor, the Perfect One, Caroline Ford and William Russell, and Lisa Bowerman at, at all? Did you say Did you say grating or rating? So I can give it a grating. Um. I don't, for William Russell and Caroline Ford showing up to do the recording, there's going to be some points there. Um, points taken off for the narration, because I just can't stand narration. Um, I'm going to give it a, a six. All right. Well, that's pretty low, but uh, that, yeah. I could have got lower. I could have got lower. You could have gone lower. That's true. Yeah. All right. So. Nice. Uh, nice. Tim, what would you give this, and and what are your final say, my friend? Um, I think it it's it's okay. There's so many pluses to it, like like you said that you you got you got your old cast that that worked together for for a year, 
together 50 years ago and they just they act like a day never passed i mean they come in and, and get get on it and and do a, a fabulous job of it i think both of them um i wish there were more like this but i i think that this one's not nearly as good as its predecessor which was the um great mastodon great. yeah fa farewell great mastodon i think that that one was three and a half hours and you didn't feel like it was dragging at all it was very good very well paced and and i think that that this one should have been tweaked a little bit. I don't. I don't think it's a bad story. I think it's a good story. I. I, I do like the idea of just them recreating that that whole period, that whole era, you know, of the first Doctor stories, and, and they do it in such an economical way with two people basically telling you the story. I get at least point to it to a certain extent, but I mean, I, I do think that they did the best they can with what they have on hand to to recreate some some first Doctor stories for us. And so I'm going to give it an eight. I think it's I think it's very well done. Oh yeah, and as Beef Dad said, the, the score on it, the, the the sound effects are all top notch. This is a, the, the Big Finish always does what they do best, which is make awesome uh, audio recordings, dramas, and whatnot. So um, I'm going to give it an eight this time. All right, thank you very much. Um, how about you, Beef Dad? Well, to be honest, the um narration doesn't worry me at all it just does not worry me at all um i think that yeah possibly the guy who adapted it um nigel robertson could have tweaked it a little more um but yeah i mean you know a vast army of ro robots have just laid dormant for years i mean Sounds like sounds like fun. Sounds like an idea that possibly got nicked for um, the, the for the budgetary stuff. reasons. Mm hmm. For budgetary reasons. Mm. Mm. Well, it sounds like the um, well. Cause I remember all the Cybermen coming out of their things where they'd been in, in suspended in in suspended animation for a long time um so yeah it's uh, that idea was used to use later um but yeah i love the idea of the perfect one i thought it was really good and as i said the performance of the perfect one was brilliant um so yeah for me it gets a nine Fantastic. Well, um, thanks for not letting the side down. No, all of you guys, thank you for listening to this. No, I'm really serious. Like, um, I, I enjoy First Doctor stories. I enjoy Caroline Ford to, to the nth degree. Of course, I'm giving it a solid gold 10 out of 10, uh, a platinum palladium 10 out of 10. Uh, she's perfect. And she, I, I honestly think that Carol Ann Ford can do no wrong. Um, but that's just my humble opinion on the subject. Um, <clears throat> she's, uh, and she, she's done well as Barbara, and it was, it was delightful. And so uh, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And uh, feel free to join Geeks Assembled Facebook group. Or bring back Susan Foreman Facebook group, all about bringing back her and Caroline Ford, and um, and also, you know, Beef Dad's fa fan group is also a wonderful little group on Facebook, and we've got Twitter and Tumblr and a bunch of other things. Lee's got a a cool Instagram social media is is our thing um, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel thank you for watching this thank you for uh, liking these videos um, and or disliking whatever you want to do you're you're free and you're not uh, you're not forced into servitude by any robotic society, so. We're very cat friendly. We are very cat friendly. And also, 
Um, stay tuned later on this, uh, very shortly after this, this video is posted, we're going to post a video about our review of Metropolis, which was re referred to in this podcast. So please, by all means, stay tuned and, and watch that video too. Coming soon to a, to a YouTube near you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so enjoy your night and and thank you for watching our video have a great day